Oh, hello. <laughs> All right, look, I'm going to talk about some stuff today. A lot of it is hypothetical, a lot of it's well known, a lot of it's putting well known things into a pattern that makes some sense. A lot of this stuff hasn't been proved, a lot of this stuff may, you've seen in your own life, so there may be proof of its evidence. But I'm going to take it all sorts of different places, because if you look at the picture, we are here. We're physical beings, and the reason I think we may evolve into something else is something I learned over the last year, I'm talking to several guys that I met. But there's another friend of mine named Chris Martinson, who's been looking at you know what's been going on in the world, and he says, if you're not furious, you're not paying attention. And seriously, he's right. There's so much going on that's wrong. And I could have taken this thing many directions. I could have addressed the plastics in the ocean, the pollution in our own houses and products, the pollution in the water, the sewage being dumped in the ocean. I could have taken all of that direction. But I started thinking, well, how does this all happen? Because, you know, something's wrong in our country when President Putin over in, uh, in Russia can ban all GMO, not allow it in the country, and arrest you if you bring it in, and all we do is just take it off the labels. Why can't Congress pass simple legislation? Look at the money these congressmen are getting from that industry. Why does Google own everything, along with Bezos and these other characters? All these companies on this page, these were small companies that were, had employees and stuff, and now Google is just swallowing up. When Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs and Schmidt and Bartz and Costello and Chambers and Allison and Hastings sit down and have wine with Obama and toasting something, maybe that's when they all agreed to give all of our information to the NSA that day, because that's the meeting that it all occurred at. Henry Kissinger said, control the oil, you control the nations. Control the food, and you control the people. And we go to the grocery store and look, my God, we have such food. So many things to buy, but only 10 companies make it. Only nine companies make all the beer. Monsanto bought Syngenta to further its genetically modified food program, and then Bayer bought Monsanto, and now Bayer and Monsanto in Uruguay growing genetically modified weed. So when weed becomes legal in the United States, will it be only their weed that's legal because they're connected to everything? Why wouldn't you turn on the news? Every single station has the same feed, same news, same information. Everything is there. It's all the same anywhere, no matter what channel you're on. Why do these idiots all have the same political view, the same stance on every issue, and calling anybody that doesn't have that stupid? Well, they work for these guys, the companies that are owned by the Bilderbergs and the Council on Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission. Are they going to tell you what they might think or what their bosses pay them to say? Because these are just grocery clerks. So if you're not furious, you're not paying attention. Remember Eyes Wide Shut? Secret society of faceless individuals that do all these creepy things. It's real. It's called the Bilderberg Group. Some of the members you might notice, Ben Bernanke, Bill Richardson, Robert Zolick, uh, George Schultz, Paul Wolfowitz, Bill Clinton, Lauren Sumners, um, Henry Kissinger, when he's still around, uh, Queen Beatrix I, Tom Daschle, Chris, uh, Bill Crystal, pundit on TV, or for everybody's opinion, Peter Sutherland, uh, Lynn Forrester Rothschild, Diane Feinstein, George Soros, Henry Paulson, you know, Timothy Geithner, Eric Schmidt, Bilderberg. And you know what? They run all these things. They run the Trilateral, Council on Foreign Relations, Brookings, all these different institutes and research institutes and funding institutes, uh, the Aspen Institute where they have all these meetings every year. They own all the universities and run all the universities like Yale and Princeton, Columbia, Skull and Bones Society and all that stuff. And these people are handpicked from those universities to be occupying the seats of government. They have all these different awards and museums and all these arts and foundations and all the, the placement companies and all the car companies and all the, the food companies and all the aerospace companies and all the weapons companies and all the banks and all that stuff. They also have the, all these leagues and these friendship things and Urban League and Foreign Legion and Santorum. They also run all the presidential campaigns, all these oversight committees and oversight boards and the United Nations this, United Nations that, and of course Clinton Global Initiative is in there. That's why we can't get simple legislation. 
So the people think, my God, we'll just, you know, we'll elect these people and they'll be able to represent us and get our laws passed. But that's what they do. They put the elected around them. So you talk to this guy over here, but you're not talking to the guy that's, that owns that guy over there. And that's why you can't pass simple legislation. And I get, it got me terribly furious. And I had to go out in the desert and think about this stuff. Because you can get so wrapped around this anger. and just It's so encompassing. You get so concerned. i got to do something. My God, what am I going to do? And I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't do anything. Just think about it. And remember the movie War Games with Matthew Broderick? Yep. The only winning move in thermonuclear war is not to play. Right? And then my dad told me once, control your anger. It's just one letter away from danger. <laughs> right? And then I remember Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull said... Inside of every man are two dogs. One's a, f a friendly dog and one's an angry dog, and they're fighting every day. And one day someone asked him which dog is winning. He said, well, the one I feed. That should be on the 20. <laughs> All right? So let's feed the friendly dog, okay? So let me show you something wonderful. What we think and what we are. This is not just a joke. What I'm about to show you, this is why we may be evolving into something new. Who we are is this. We are this human body with this enormous load of bio micro microorganisms called the human microbiome. 25 species in the stomach, 500 to 1,000 in the gut, 60 in the urinary tract, 1,000 species on the skin, 600 species in the mouth, the pharynx, larynx, respiratory system. These microorganisms produce a series of essential chemicals and, and, uh, and, and groups that, aromatic hydrocarbon groups that keep us alive, give us our tryptophan, give us our phenylalanine, give us our tyrosine, which gives us our serotonin and melatonin, which gives us our dopamine and all our you know, cognitive hormones. And we're gonna talk about how they communicate because we have this thing called the extracellular matrix. It's called the glycocalyx. And what it is, this is the internet of the cells. The cells have to be able to communicate. There has to be a physical nature to do it. There's more to just the physical real world than physical, but this is how we do it in this level because there are these, these hyaluronic acids with these chondroitin sulfates that are attached outside the cell, to the cell, to the cytochrome in the cell to move charges in and out of the cell. And next to the cell, if it's a healthy cell, it has a layer of negatively charged sheets of water that Gerald Pollack found is called exclusion zone water. That's what cells really look like. The cells themselves have actins and microtubules and, and fibrins that go through the cell and, and connect with the nucleus, connect to the surface. Outside the surface is the glycocalyx, uh, which is the extracellular matrix of all these connecting charge tubes and information tubes. That's what our cells really look like. That's what the inside of the cell looks like. So when the information is passed through the network into the cell, that's how it's passed into the cell and into the nucleus to read the, the genetic code and do all this stuff. There's also been something discovered in the last few years called the mesentery. We've always known it's been there. We didn't know it was its own organ. It came with us at the very beginning, and it wraps around your intestines. It's full of nerves. It's full of blood vessels. It gets the chemicals made in the intestines up into the bloodstream. The, 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 the state of the intestines are tracked by, this, by the nerves. Mind-brain connection. And it began at the very, very beginning. So there is an argument that could be said that what's inside the lumen is who we are, because if we don't have a microbiome, this thing doesn't live. So it, there's this physical body that builds around this capability to take in food and get nutrients and do this stuff and house these microbiomes so it can be done properly. And there's nerves and lymphatic systems and, and arteries and veins that reach in there to service this and keep these cells alive. We're all here because of the sun. Two meanings. We're here because of Ben, and we're here because we have a sun, right? <laughs> and the sun provides light and electricity. So I'm going to show you a few things today that kind of goes with Isaac Newton said. If I can see further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. I learned from these guys, and you will too, First guy I'm going to talk about is Fritz Albert Popp. Fritz Albert Popp is a not very well-known scientist that first started understanding that human beings create biophotons. 
and it's not radiant light. It's a stimulated emission of a photon from a cell. Also found out that you can do spontaneous uh, H2O, H2O2 hydrogen peroxide induced by biophoton signals, and that's really interesting to me because it just turned out this year that if you have the flu, you take a cap full of hydrogen peroxide and pour it in your ear and leave it there for about 30 seconds, letting it pop and bubble, and do the other ear, and you do that three times a day, and it gets rid of the flu. Biophotons? No one knows why. Talk to Joe McCall about it. He goes, yeah, it works, but we have no idea how. So if you have friends with the flu, have them try that. It should go away in about a day, three treatments. When they take pictures of germinating cucumber seeds in total darkness, light is coming out of the cotyledon area and light is coming out of the root cells where the loops, root cells are dramatically expanding to grow the taproot. It's now very well accepted that biophotons are generated by plant-specific processes in plants. It's also well accepted that these are part of our communications and information encoding in biological systems, and that it's well established that during this, this interaction at the biochemical level, there are photons that are released by chemical reactions and photons that are stimulated by chemical reactions, and that we have a propensity as a human being to absorb infrared energy. So let's talk about Gerald Pollack because it has absolutely about infrared energy. Gerald found out there's a fourth phase of water in between liquid and solid where the water molecules will line up into a hexagonal shape that overlaps and they have interesting qualities. One is they have a very negative uh, potential and they sit next to a hydrophilic surface. Now, it's called EZ because it's exclusion zone water and what he found was if you shine infrared on it, that exclusion zone expands and it pushes all the debris and everything out of the way to have this pure sheets of water with no debris in there. And Stephanie Seneff. Stephanie is one of, one of the most incredible women I think I've ever met. If there was an Isaac Newton in health, that would be her. Okay? And I can't give her enough praise because her work in endothelial nitric oxide synthase, which you think is for making nitric oxide, but it's really not. It's when it's in the bloodstream, it actually combines cholesterols with sulfates, sulfates the vitamin D. There's all these incredible things in the body, and she's seeing something that I don't think anybody's seen. And it just is amazing. And she's also the person that really brought out the problems with glyphosate and its surfactant, polyethos oxalated taloamine which is listed as an inert ingredient by the FDA, but has enormous dam potential damage to human tissue and fetal tissue. Which brings up another thing. I like to show this every now and then. I've shown a few people I'm here. Women have two X chromosomes, and men have an X and a Y chromosome. We would all agree to that. But that's an X and a Y chromosome. Look at how much code we guys are missing. And this is very serious to take into consideration. When I have someone that I admire so much as Seneff who sees things I have never even dreamt of seeing, because I probably don't have the genetic capability of seeing a lot of things. Women do. All the women in the group would probably agree that you see things before they happen. You feel things before they happen. You have an intuition about things that men just don't seem to get. We can't. We don't have the genes for it. Please give us, forgive us for that. Okay? You have a higher tolerance of pain. You create the race. I mean, I can't give you enough praise. I love women, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and that we should encourage our young daughters to go into science and math and these studies because they can offer things that we men could have never seen because they have more genes. <laughs> all right, that being said, the other giant we all will recognize, of course, is David Talbot. I first heard of David Talbot in 1990. I'm going to say maybe five or six. I was, I was in, in, on the East Coast at the time, just happened to be sent a copy of this Electric Universe hour-long video that he had put together back then, a long time. It might have been a little later than that. And it didn't make any sense to me at the time, but it, 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 it pinged me. I, I will agree, it did ping me. Because the idea of charge between things at distance without wires doesn't make any, any you know, so I have no problem with that. And that he's the guy that allowed us to see structures like this in an electrical structure matrix. These, these things we see, it's, you know, Ben was trying to talk about, you know, what, what happens after the event's over and what's left. Kind of like when you see, at night, when you see a fireworks display, and bam, the thing goes off and all the light flies over the place, all that's left is all this little trail of smoke. You wouldn't know anything about that stuff 
if, if you understood why the trail of smoke was there. And all we see is the trail of smoke, but what happened is this stuff, at a different level, at different frequencies and wavelengths, we have an electric characteristic of this universe because, as I said yesterday, everything that comes out of the electric vacuum mostly just assembles into electrons and positrons. So there's an electric characteristic to just the physical matter in this universe that he saw in whatever way he saw it. And I was at odds with him about his ideas about things coming into the solar system and all that stuff, and then I saw a video of what it would be like if a, just a star came into our star system early on, and it would absolutely disrupt the planet's orbits in this, in this, this, this star system immensely for decades, for millennia. And I thought, okay, okay. Then I started getting back into his stuff, and sure enough, he's right. I like him. And also now it's being shown that there are these things between galaxies. We've got this, these connections between galaxies now that we're now starting to recognize. Orbiting galaxies around galaxies. And we also have electrical sensors in our body because our brain cells are very much like the universe, the way they're connected. So as it is above, as it is below. So light and electrical signaling processing is the new physical laws in biological processes. I guarantee it. The other guy you may or may not know, but you've heard of Earthing, I'm sure, is Clint Ober, who's the guy that recognized it. He had liver cancer, lost most of his liver, and while he was healing, he went out on a sabbatical. He sold everything he had, all of his artwork and all that stuff, and just took out the road in an RV and started driving around trying to find some reality. And what he found was that there's health benefits to earthing. And maybe even more important with these studies that Ben's been bringing up is that, you know, there's going to be quite an impact on the ionosphere and genetic changes on mortality from diseases of the circulatory system. But if you ground, if you wear shoes, you're, you're, you're not grounded. But if you ground yourself, you get a big umbrella effect above you, protecting you from solar radiation just by going barefoot. If you've been ionized from cell phone radiation, cell phone towers, and all the kind of stuff we're exposed to, sleep on a grounding sheet. Brings the electrons in, turns, you know, neutralizes the positive charges on your ionization. Go outside in the morning. I just was outside with some friends out there on the grass and bare feet. Just ground yourself. It only takes a little bit to fix yourself. And because we know that the, the Earth is this huge potential electricity. Electricity comes out of the Earth. It goes up into the clouds, not just down from them. And whenever you see a, these lightning bolts, you see a lot of light, too. Well, light is electrons and positrons. That's what photons are. I have to hammer on this subject here. And when they go up, they flash upwards. They form sprites and charms and halos and all that stuff. And you can see them in space. You can see the one off the right there over that thunderhead, the one in the distance over that one. But if you get too ionized and you don't have a good enough negative charge, your blood cell clumps up. And if it's clumped up, it can't deliver oxygen to the brain and to the retina, the two organs that need them the most. But if you ground yourself in only a couple of hours, that zeta potential goes away and the blood cells free again and everything's great. So there's something we found in earthing that has something to do with the ability of blood cells to repel each other by making a negative condition amongst the, on the blood surface. And when we break things, there's a lot of light in them. So my, my theory is that matter is light. It's matter, it's light in a resting state where it's not being broadcast, so you can't see it unless you break the matter, and then you see it very easily. There's another thing you know, might, may or may not know about called piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity is the ability of certain materials to produce a voltage under mechanical stress. If you've ever had a huge quartz boulder and hit it with a hammer, you'll see flashes of light in the quartz. That's the piezoelectric effect. Piezoelectric effects work the other way, too. If you put a charge on them, they will deform. And we're getting a charge from the sun all the time. And the telaric currents, which are the subsurface currents of electricity in the Earth, are used in Turkey and Russia to actually map and where to put the, the pipelines and stuff safely. And we've seen from Ben's site that these electron density layers, as the electrons come down over a vault line that then produces a, an earthquake, there's your electrical induction on crystallite rock to produce a mechanical effect. Tension, compression. Both will make photons and electricity. Your DNA does that. Minerals in your system cause DNA to pulse. It's this pulsing of the DNA that pumps them. And that's where Fritz comes in again. 
because he found that during mitosis, you end up with biophotons being released from the stretching DNA as it's replicating and, and oscillating. And it comes in all different frequencies. And these different frequencies actually penetrate the skin at different depths. Ultraviolet only gets to the surface, like less than a millimeter. But it can cause a lot of problems if you're not taking lycopene and sulfated vitamin D, which then prevents the cells from being damaged by ultraviolet. Sunblocks, they're toxic chemicals. They're bad for the skin. Your liver has to get rid of them. It has to be processed. It doesn't prevent sun cancer. It creates other cancers. The other thing is, if you go all the way across the spectrum, infrared goes deeply, three to five centimeters into the, into the body, so it gets deep into tissue. So when you lay out in the sun, you're charging your cells with infrared. That's why infrared therapy works. It goes down and deep. Well, one of the reasons it works, penetration is how it gets to do its work. I'll explain in a minute. Back to easy water. When you shine infrared light on, on water, it creates EZ, and it expands. We also see that if we shine light on proteins at certain wavelengths, the Walker proteins on the, mitochond or the, the microtubules go one way. With ultraviolet, it goes the other way. So light stimulates the behavior of certain molecular systems. So DNA is producing light. DNA is very, very complex. We think about this easy spiral thing, but really it's these spirals and histones and these nucleotide scale and a nuclear scale, these nuclear territories and chromosome territories. There's a lot of potential for making a lot of different light. So really what we have is, you know, living, the experiments indicate that biophotons originate from a coherent photon field within a living organism. They're essential for intra- and extracellular communication. We are a genetic supercomputer that's run with photons that regulate and orchestrate the chemical interactions. I did this one on purpose. Biophotons, of course, you're emanating electromagnetic radiation and EEGs all the time. You're sending broadcast stuff out to the universe. But you're also doing it with your heart because your heart has neural tissue. And that's interesting because these guys that get transplants from these donors, they suddenly have memories of things they've never done, like skateboarding or liking Polish sausage or anything. They've never eaten those things. They've never done those things. But suddenly they have the memory of doing it because your nerves are also in your heart. Your heart determines a lot of stuff. In fact, the lost gospel of Thomas says that when the two become one, all things are possible. And what that means is when the thought becomes a, a, a feeling, an emotion is generated through the heart. And the heart is the broadcast. The heart pulses. The heart resets the brain. The heart created the brain out of the cells when you were first fertilized as little sperms and ovums. The heart makes the brain. So the heart is everything. Your heart is everything. When you lose someone you love, do you hurt in your head? Anyway, so we have living systems that obviously are emitting biophotons. And if you put people in the dark, you know, you get this huge stimulated emission of photons from certain areas. And we know that photons, just like lasers melting metals, photons can actually raise the energy level of a chemical reaction. Once that's occurred, it releases a photon, which may do another thing someplace else, because then we have protein to protein biophoton interactions where external lights from outside or biophotons made inside activate, instruct enzymes to start doing particular kinds of deformations. And at different frequencies, at different colors, are instructing the, the cells to do different things at different times. And the photons go through about five layers of cells. So it's fairly localized regulation of the chemistry in the cells, but then the, this chemistry can get into the bloodstream and get throughout the body. Now what's interesting is tryptophan. Tryptophan requires UV radiation to be excited. But as you saw earlier, UV is only, only penetrates down to the upper layer, which means somewhere in the body, UV has to be made because tryptophan's in the blood, centimeters down below the surface. Turns out mitochondria make ultraviolet in that frequency range. Because not if they suspect it's, it's the oxidation radicals created during the ADP to ATP cycle, right? But I say it's because of the genetics inside the DNA running those things, because it's the photons that have to instruct the chemical thing to happen in this, in this theory, and that the mitochondria are always connected to microtubules. So you have the microtubules able to conduct the photons out of the cell, into the extracellular matrix, into the, into the inter, extracellular ma uh, uh, fluids, into the bloodstream, and you end up being instructed with the energy activated by organelles deep in the body. 
Let's talk cell phones because we have to address it. Um, it's a low-frequency microwave radiation. And once it's activated in your cells, you have these voltage gate calcium channels in the cells. And they allow calcium in the cell. And if you don't get enough charge on the other side of the cell, the gate only works one way. So then you start calcifying. Cell phones accelerate aging. Calcification accelerates aging, and cell phones accelerate calcification. But if you ground yourself at night, and you go out and get to, hooked to the earth, and you increase that negative potential inside your cells, which I'll show you how that works in a few minutes here, you, you can negate the effects of cell phones every single day. If you, at work, have a grounding pad that you put at your computer desk that you plug into the ground plug hole on a, on a power jack, not the power ones, please, but the, <laughs> but the grounding one, right? And just put your feet on that bare feet while you're typing all day long, you're grounded. You're grounded from the computer, you're grounded from the cell phones, the Wi-Fi, and all that stuff. There are ways to mitigate these problems. But things are coming out of the cells all the time. That's where Gerald comes in. It turns out that easy water are very constrained. They have all these characteristics. I've even tried to make some myself, and I tell you, it's very interesting. I, I've got a quartz coffee pot and a 629 nanometer infrared therapy light and a, a bunch of ice and put the light underneath it. And if it was just the ice alone, it would have melted in a half an hour. It stayed there for four hours without hardly melting, but it did create a kind of a really interesting layer of fluid at the bottom when I suck it up with a straw thinking, hey, maybe I can get some easy water, you know? <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> They are interesting, though. The reason they're negative is because when these hexagonal arrays of water overlap each other, there's an association of the hydrogen and oxygen making a hydroxide molecule. And there's where your negativity is really strong. And they lay in sheets, and they build on hydrophilic surfaces, and your cells are a hydrophilic inside and outside surface. Hydrophobic on the inside, but outside the cells and inside the cellular matrix, it's hydrophilic, which means easy water will build up on those surfaces. And this is where this exclusion gun thing really, really works, because people haven't thought of it this way, but if you go out in, outside and get some infrared therapy, or you go into an infrared sauna, or you take a nice big hot bath, and you soak your body in infrared, it expands the area of EZ around the cells. It also gets rid of all the toxins and debris that the cell is trying to get rid of into the lymphatic system. So that's how we get the lymphatic system filled up. We have to work and do some exercise because it has no heart to pump through this. So you have to exercise, pump the lymphatic. But that's the cool thing about get out in the sun. You're actually cleaning your cells. At the same time as you're creating these negative sheets of water around the cells. And once they're around the cells, they can get into the cells because there are these aquaporins, which are these structures that penetrate the cell surface that allow negatively charged water to get into the cell. Not positively charged, only negatively charged. So the question is, that's great. Negative charges get into the cell. But how do the positive charges get into the cell? And the aquaporins only allow negative charges through. Oh, there she is again. <laughs> what happens is the extracellular matrix exists to maintain this negative surface with the, with the sulfated chondroitins on these protein links. But the protein links themselves allow the positive charges to get into the cell. So you get this, this plus charge in the cell, right? you get exposed to infrared, the aquaporins open up and let the negative charge into the cell fluids, and then you have that potential. It's an electrical generator. You've got your positive and negative, you've got a battery condition. A lot of the organelles require these differences in charge to work, like your lysosomes and mitochondria all from getting easy water built up into your cells. That's how to do it. You don't drink alkaline water. That's not what puts it in there. It's infrared and normal water, clean water. And of course, the conducting systems for these informations, microtubules, just to be perfect for biophotons, actin fibers and filaments for, for electron transfers, intermediate filaments for, for chemical walkers and all this kind of stuff. And that's what you have in the cell. You have this, the, the blue color, the cyan color, it, it connects to the very outside of the cell and it runs all through the matrix and so forth and, and conducts through the cell surface and around the cell. The yellow microtubules go right from the cell surface into the nucleus to get information and things out from the nucleus, out to the cell membrane, into the extracellular tissue, and then into the body for use. 
And that's how this thing works at that level. Now, she has a very provocative proposal. This is from her presentation. That cholesterol sulfate supplies oxygen, sulfur, cholesterol, energy, and negative charge to all the tissues. And the sun does it. It's synthesized from sulfide in the skin and bloodstream, utilizing energy in sunlight. Remember? Infrared gets deep into the system, gets down to the below the skin layer where the real vessels are, and starts working in there. And the endothelial nitric oxide synthase molecule is the one that performs it. The skin's a very powerful solar battery. We're mostly cholesterol. Here's a great breakfast, scrambled eggs and brains. Yeah. I think they're serving it tomorrow morning. No, I don't really care. The reason I bring this up is because Two servings in this can, 7,000 milligrams of cholesterol in brain tissue in this can. We need cholesterol. And the way we keep the, 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 the cellular titio negative is by having these sulfated chondroitins. So sulfur is in every one of these molecular chains on these uh, proteoglycan monomers, which means we need sulfur badly. Sulfur, broccoli, garlic, these are foods that should be in your diet because they have sulfur. Sulfur does something else. Sulfur gets in the body, gets to the cells, is a strong enough ion to open up those channels to let the calcium out of the cells. So if you want to clean up calcified tissue, like, like arthritis and stuff, eat a lot of sulfur, it cleans it out. As you can see here, this is how they kind of work. There are, these, there are these negative fans that sit on these positive charge lines, and they maintain, and they repel each other, and they also, you know, make sure that that area stays, stays negative. It's around all the nerve cells. The nerve cells have, have to have the same thing, so the brain's full of this kind of water as well. Photoelectric effect, you know, when UV comes in and gets into the surface, that it combines with, with, uh, with uh, vitamin D and moves into the bloodstream where it gets sulfated, and then you have vitamin D that actually works to prevent skin cancer. Interestingly enough, these are trichomes on cannabis. UVB gets into the trichome and stimulates the regulation of gene transcriptions and enzymes to create the terpenoids and the cannabinoids. So you have to have UVB to actually make a lot of these psychoactive and physiological chemicals in that plant. The cholesterol sulfates sit inside the, the blood vessels on the inside surface. And there's, that's a negative charge on that sulfated tip. They also sit on the membrane of the erythrocytes. So you have a negative charge on the outside of the, of the, of the blood platelets. A negative charge on blood platelets, negative charge on the cell surface. Blood's being repelled through the arterial system. If you have the right charge and you have the right water and so forth, it's going to be repelled. And the interesting thing is, in blood walls, the blue side is the arterial wall. And look at all the cholesterol. And that's the, ve the venous side, no cholesterol. We've heard of arterial sclerotic plaque, but never venous sclerotic plaque. So in the bloodstream, the arterial system is built for repelling blood into the venous system, where it's then sucked into the heart and pumped through the system again. So I was talking to Stephanie. This is what got me actually talking to her about this stuff, because last year I presented this information that there's a, a very, very disturbing decrease in, in minerals in food. And it looks like it's causing a, an increase in mineral deficiency diseases, which it probably is. But that the line jumped in liver disease right about 2000. And she said, well, that's glyphosate. Because that line should have taken that dotted line. If it's just from pollution, it should just be an increasing level of pollution. But something happened to make it an exponential line. And it turns out that glyphosate chelates the same minerals out of plants as it does out of soil, which keeps it out of plants. So yeah, the food's going to have less minerals in it because it's being chelated out of the soil and never gets into the plants. This is such an incredible situation because the manganese, zinc, and copper are used for superoxide dismutase cycle in the cells because that's how your cell takes superoxide, combines it with hydrogen peroxide, breaks up into water and oxygen, and deacidifies your cells. And the worst thing is that glyphosate can mimic glycine. So you can uptake in molecules like glutathione, which is necessary for detoxifying stuff in your liver. In fact, it may do a lot of damage. The liver requires cytochrome P450 enzymes. These are the enzymes that your body uses to actually break up toxins, decontaminate things, make fat soluble into water soluble, all that kind of stuff. It activates the vitamin D when it gets to the liver. It's, it makes the cholesterol. It makes bile acids to digest the fats. It makes aromatase synthesis for the sex hormones. But glyphosate takes the physical laws of biological processes and turns them toxic. 
Stephanie says there's three main dangers, and I agree with her 100%. Glyphosate interrupts the shikimate pathway in gut bacteria to cause toxic chemical synthesis in the gut that enters the bloodstream and ends up as a systemic exposure all the way to the brain. Disrupts the cytochrome P450 enzyme and reduces the detoxification capability of the liver. And chelates plus two cations to bind essential micronutrient minerals in the body, causing <laughs> nutritional mineral deficiency. It creates mineral deficient food. This is our greatest challenge as a human race. This toxic poison and the things that make it up are our biggest challenge because it's in the food supply. Monsanto says glyphosate targets an enzyme found in plants, but not in people and pets. Marketing only half the story. Now you can find glyphosate in just about everything you eat, every fast food, the bun, the burger, the cow-fed GMO corn soy, the, the, the cheese, uh, high fructose GMO corn syrup in the drinks and the condiments, GMO canola oil to fry up the potatoes, potatoes desiccated with Roundup to dry them out so you can harvest them. And this guy just says, nope, no way, can't import them, got to arrest these guys, not in our, not my country. And we just take the labels off. So why was the promoter safe? Well, like I said earlier, the shikimate pathway, which is a shikimic acid pathway, it's a seven-step metabolic route used by bacteria, fungi, algae, some protozoans, and so forth, that biosynthesizes the folates and aromatic amino acids, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan. Glyphosate and POEA act on this metabolic pathway, and it does not exist in human cell biology. And here it is. In this cycle, a series of chemical transformations down to the shikimate point. Actually, do you see there? Tamiflu is made in, a, in this cycle. All right? Because it, it's, it's, it's converted to clisoramate, which then goes into the tryptophan, tyrosine, phenylalanine, all these things. It may not act on human cell biology, but it acts on all the microbiome bacteria. It breaks it no longer makes those, those essential chemicals any longer. Tryptophan is really important. It's the precursor to the neurotransmitter serotonin and melatonin. Serotonin keeps you happy, melatonin helps you sleep. So melatonin also stimulates the hypothalamus to release the factors to tell the pituitary to let loose with the human growth hormone and all that stuff at 12.30 at night if you go to sleep by then. It's good to get to sleep so you get your human growth factors. Uh, it's formed into serotonin, and which is an appetite suppressor. If you have serotonin and tryptophan, you just don't get that hungry. Phenylalanine is found naturally in breast milk of all mammals. It's an analgesic and an antidepressant. Good for babies. Mammals synthesize tyrosine from the essential amino acid phenylalanine. Tyrosine enables the thyroid hormones T3 and T4 to be, to be converted and made. Tyrosine is converted in the latex of the opium poppy to make morphine. Tyrosine is also the precursor of the skin pigment melanin. And if you break the phenylalanine, which makes the tyrosine, which makes the L-dopa, which makes the dopamine, which makes the noradrenaline and adrenaline, you don't get any of your adrenal hormones. You get neurotransmitter depletion. You get fatigue, foggy thinking. So yeah, it does a whole lot to us and pets. One of the things it does do, it, it takes the, uh, the C. difficile bacteria to, and, and it converts it to make a toxic phenol, which is a five-sided ring, which has a propensity to grab sulfur which then goes into the bloodstream into the liver, and the sulfur is released, but then the phenol is in the liver, which causes liver cancer. <laughs> I mean, what couldn't they do to make it worse, okay? <laughs> and the, so the glyphosate attacks our microbiome, and they're all over our bodies, and they regulate our body systems, and they give us the t chemicals to keep us happy, help us sleep, help us think, all that stuff. Microbiome controls all that. So it's important to understand how the situation is. We have to begin at the start, when we're just a little teeny nub of cells, the mesentery forms. You can see here the nerve, the main spinal nerve is forming, and then later the bones are forming. But all through this time, the mesentery is there as these organs develop, the spleen and all this stuff along that GI tract. It's all connected to the brain with this tissue, with these organs. So your brain, your liver, your GI tract, all that stuff, it's all connected from the very beginning. So finally, when you're born and you're growing up and you're eating food, everything that goes through the intestines is monitored by the mesentery, which has blood cells, 
for you know nutrients and taking toxins away, the venous system, nerve cells to understand and, and detect the, the, the chemical changes down there that affects the body's head because gut health is brain health. Without the microbiome, a healthy microbiome, we're not healthy. It's not just the nutrients in food, it's the way it feeds the microbiome to produce elements that we need for healthy, sane existence. And these, micro, these microbes are very important. They do all kinds of functions in the, in the intestines. They compete for nutrients with pro, and probiotics. They do bioconversions. They produce vitamins and growth substrates, uh, direct antagonism against pathogens. Um, and it's amazing how much they are controlled by cells that reach up, nerve cells that reach up and actually monitor these things inside the, the villi, inside the intestinal wall. But if it gets inflamed and it gets damaged by glyphosate, and these chemicals that make the microbiome produce, the cell walls split, and undigested food and toxins get into the blood and in the cellular tissue, which is taken throughout the body, and you're toxified. Then why is it not safe for animals, for mammals? Well, human cells do not outnumber our microorganism load. That load is 10 to 1. We have 9 billion cells. There are 90 billion. And it determines our actual health. The health of the gut is the health of the human organism. All of the microorganisms have the sugar made pathway, and they are all going to respond to glyphosate and the PEOA. Because of this, it disrupts the beneficial bacteria to allow pathogens to overgrow, candida, that kind of stuff. The pathogenic overgrowth produces metabolic tox by toxic byproducts, causes inflammation. Inflammation breaks the blood wall, gets into the blood, and bang, your body suffers. The weird one is the, is the surfactant, this thing that makes it hydrophobic or makes it hydrophilic. Glyphosate is a hydrophobic chemical. It'll drip off the leaf and won't stick. So you put the surfactant in there, that makes it stick. But what they found was, they were surprised by this, it's more deadly to human embryonic and placental umbilical cord cells than the herbicide itself. The surfactant is what causes these genetic malformations. And when people get infected with this stuff or exposed to this stuff and get toxic levels of the stuff built up in the system, all kinds of bad stuff can happen in kidneys, livers, and pituitaries. On the far left are the control groups, these guys, kidney, liver, pituitary, GMO, Roundup, GMO and Roundup, causing all sorts of tumors to form. They've also established that it's, there's absolute links to birth defects from using Roundup and glyphosate. And how in the world did they get the stuff approved? Well, as it turns out, if you only test it on animals for three months, you don't show any signs of damage at all. But right afterwards, all these things show up. So they only gave the safety tests given to the FDA were only conducted for three months. Isn't that nice? You know how to hide the evidence. And then the, the, the agency that your corporate heads now work for, because there's a revolving door with the FDA and the Monsanto, right? <laughs> oh, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with these mice. <laughs> But where they use a lot of this stuff, like in Argentina, where you're seeing extreme problems, two-bodied piglets, two-headed calves, skinless pigs, trunk-nosed puppies, eight-legged piglets, two-headed goats, all this weird deformations during formation. And here's how it works. Lyphosate interacts with retinoic acid and, and inhibits the expression of specific genes that control cyclopia, microencephalia, uh, affected cranial neural crests, cranial facial malformations. Okay, get ready for the next picture, because this happened in India this year, and I, I had a hundred of these pictures to show you. They're just too terrifying. But if you were having a baby, and that's the baby that came out, would you be a little angry? If you're not furious, you're not paying attention. It's also in breast milk. Senior Monsanto scientist Dan Goldstein recently said, if ingested, glyphosate is excreted rapidly and does not accumulate in body fat or tissues and does not undergo metabolism in human beings. Rather, it is excreted unchanged in the urine. Well, that's not really true if you're finding it in breast tissue. Looks like it accumulates pretty well. And they also found that the uh, concentration in breast milk is 760 to 1,600 times higher than the pesticide limit set by the EU. What did the U.S. do? It raised the allowable levels. That's a, that, boy, what a solution. So our cells are outnumbered by our microbiome. And because of that, no matter what these cancers occur, it has to be associated with disruptions in the microbiome in that area. And sure enough, 
thyroid and cancer deaths. There's 600 species in the mouth, larynx, pharynx, and respiratory system. Deaths from Alzheimer's. The inflammation causes leaky gut and pathogenic toxins to get out of the blood and get into the, bl into the brain. Deaths from kidney failure. There's 60 species in the ur ur genital tract. Gee, I wonder what they're producing that's really toxic to the, to the kidney. Chronic constipation, since we've introduced this stuff, esophageal reflux, Crohn's disease, diabetes, it goes on and on and on. And all these organs that are experiencing this have lots and lots of microorganisms that are being damaged by glyphosate. It's used all over the United States, mostly in the Midwest, upper tier, like in Montana, incredible out in Central Valley in California. It's really bad out there. And don't believe the canola oil, organic garbage. There is no organic canola oil. I don't care what's on the label. I don't care what they've stuck on there to make you buy that furniture polish, because that's what it was before it was allowed to be eaten. <laughs> it's furniture polish. Soybean oil? Soybeans are terrible, especially for men. These are phytoestrogens. So men, if you're doing soy latte, stop or get a dress, okay? <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's, it's really terrible what they've done. You're not going to find, you know, clean oils from these, these plants because you can see by the charts, almost 100% of all these crops are now GM. So that's the problem. It's not the toxins. There's, toxins are absolutely adding to this, but it's also the, G, the glyphosate. So look at all the wonderful things it does. Gastrointestinal problems, well, that's from the phenols in the intestinal tract. Obesity, tryptophan disruption, low serotonin, causing increased appetite. Diabetes, sugar intake due to serotonin decrease, causing increased appetite. Heart disease, cholesterol damage by reduced liver function. It goes on and on and on and on. But let's see how it works, actually. In obesity, why do sad, unhappy, unhappy people and angry people eat a lot of food? Because generally, I can make that general statement about unhappy people. Okay? Glyphosate causes low tryptophan in food. It chelates it in the soil so that it can't be made in the plant. The plant doesn't have it. The food doesn't have it. You can't get the microbiome to make it. And the microphages in the blood will actually scavenge available tryptophan to protect themselves during their antibacterial and chemical detox work. So subsequent low tryptophan reduces serotonin levels. Serotonin is an appetite suppressor. Low serotonin is an appetite increaser. So eating sugar causes serotonin depletion, which we know, and low serotonin causes depression and likely irrational violent behavior. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome is related to this issue as well. Low serotonin makes low levels of melatonin in the pineal gland. And fluoride in toothpaste crystallizes the pineal gland, so it can't even function. So low melatonin output produces low hypothalamic stimulation. And for releasing factors of pituitary, reduced pituitary output means poor sleep. Glyphosate equals fatigue, depression, obesity, and violent behavior. And people that get off this stuff and start only eating organic foods lose all these desires and these addictions and all this stuff. Not to mention, if you do green drinks, the green cells in the drinks also are full of easy water. So if you drink an easy, you know that fat, sick, and nearly dead video? The guy that, from Australia that does all the green drinks for like two months and loses 180 pounds and he's trim again? He drank a lot of easy water, which allows you to get rid of all the toxins into the lymph system. So we also know that most of the wheat, it's not GM, but it's sprayed with glyphosate to dry it out, which brings the question, are you gluten intolerant or glyphosate intolerant? <laughs> I know, Bill Davis, great idea. These proteins do affect... 4% of the population is affected with a condition called celiacs, extreme uh, irritation to the bowel due to the gliden protein that's always with gluten. It's not gluten, it's, it's actually gliden. But if you don't want to eat that kind of wheat or you do have celiacs, you can now buy einkorn wheat. This is the wheat before all this stuff was modified and, and messed with. It's tough to cook with, though. You've got to really let it rise for a long time. Because I, I try to use this stuff. Oh, there, just someone that knows. There you go. It's a whole different process of making bread. So I have to bring this up because this hit me last night, a couple of nights ago, and I was talking to a bunch of people privately. Okay. Who are we? What are we? We think we're human. What are we? Because when you look at who we mostly are, it's the microbiome, isn't it? They all numbers 10 to 1. If they're not happy, we think crazy thoughts and do crazy things and get violent and do all sorts of criminal activities. Let me give you an idea of what I'm thinking here. 
Mars lost its, its magnetic field and its atmosphere after a huge, what I say was a huge solar event, which blew the atmosphere off, maybe affected Earth too. At that time, we had bacteria that only made sulfur. But then, after that event, we suddenly have bacteria that takes CO2 and makes oxygen. We get oxygenated atmosphere. Hey, happy times are on the way. It took two or three billion years to get to the point where the ocean algae were washed up enough to populate the dirt with a microbiome. So the microbiome's in the dirt. Okay, more solar storms, more mutations. The first plants grow. Now the microbiomes in the soil are gonna be on that plant. But now the microbiome has a sensor system up above the soil going, oh wow, there's some wind, there's some light, there's some stuff. Starts working with the, the, the chemical signals of the plant to start populating the chemicals for the plant to grow the plant better. It has its first AI. <laughs> the microbiome has evolved to, to create another entity that it can co-opt to do work for it. Then later, but it's in one place. You can only stand here and read wherever it is. But then, through a series of other mutations from radiation, probably, we end up with the animals, in particular the mice, because that's where we come from, because really the microbiome is moving all over the planet in all kinds of animals and fish and stuff. They are in rats, they are in lizards, they are in tigers, they are in dinosaurs, all that stuff. But the ones that we care about, of course, are us. So the microbiome it was able to move into the mice. The mice evolved into us, and now we've taken the microbiome to the moon. So it was trapped in the earth, ocean, and soil. It created plants, got into plants for perception to analyze environment. It, be it became mobile and could go anywhere with the animals. It waited until there was a suitable evolved complex being that it probably evolved being in that being that has taken it to another planet with dirt. Jump, 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 jump. Who are we really? It's just something to think about, you know? Are we a biological, photonically integrated genetic machine for a species from the first kingdom who have conquered this planet and use us in an evolved way to leave the Earth inside of a biological machine? That's not an incorrect evaluation in some, in some scheme, right? So who are we? We have all these different looks and all these different backgrounds and all this stuff, but we all have a biome. And the biome is like a collective mind of the beings, 10 times as many cells as we are, orchestrating us to think we are who we are because it keeps that biome alive. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just, I know it's crazy, but it makes you think now that we're thinking about, you know, making robots in our image, in our likeness. In fact, they're making sex with robots now, of course. But if it was against the law to put a human face on a robot, that would blow that industry right off the bat, wouldn't it? I mean, seriously. Hey, baby, you're looking a uh, lot today. <laughs> anyway, so let's get down to it. All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing, and women too. So what can you do about all this? Well, it's pretty easy. The only winning move in genetically modified food war is not to play. So only eat non-GMO food, eat organic food. Demand it. Go to your farmer's market. Fund those farmers to grow that way. Um, Pam and I take our minerals to uh, the, our farmer's market and give it out to the, to, the, to the farmers that we like to buy from because then they mineralize their food for us. And it's good for everybody else, but we get a source of our mineralized food without having to grow all types of foods. Works right. So if you have a farmer's market, buy some of our minerals, take it to a farmer, and only buy from him at the farmer's market. you got mineralized food. And we've proven it bumps it up. It bumps the mineral content back up into food. Above all, feed the friendly dog. You know, what you think about, you are. If you have happy thoughts, you're going to be happy. If you're mean and angry and, and, and confused and hurting, you're not going to be happy. But the universe is only going to give you what you think about. Buuki pati kalamu. Thought forms everything. Everything you've ever done has started with a thought. Coming to this conference began with a thought. Think about that. <laughs> everything you've ever achieved is because you thought about it and then figured out a way to achieve it. But you thought about it. We're all these thinking minds, or our bio, oh, biomes are, our microbiomes are telling us we are. <laughs> Feed the friendly dog. It's your life. Hit the ground running. Change what goes into your eyes and in your ears. We know that these guys from that group run these teams of propaganda agents, so don't listen to the delivery boys. 
Throw it out the window. <laughs> Seriously. Just toss it out the window. It's not going to do you any good. And watch Suspicious Observers in the morning. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously, that's what I tune into every, every morning. Before Drudge Report, I watch Ben's stuff. Anyways, to change what goes in your nose and lungs, all right? Don't become the filter. I run that air filter in my house 24-hour days, and every month, that's how much stuff is not in my lungs. That means that's how much stuff I don't have to decontaminate, get rid of, detoxify. It's, it's full of pollen and all kinds of weird stuff, and who knows what. Get a filter, clean it out, don't be the filter. Change what goes into your mouth and gut. Well, this is what's in tap water. Fluoride, lead, mercury, nitrates, nitrites, selenium, thallium, acrylamides, maclachlorides, atrazine, benzene, benzopyrenes, carbofurans, carbotetrachloride, chloridane, all these pesticides, all these chemicals, they're discharged into the water, they again end up, and they cause all these neurological damage, all these physical damage, all this genetic damage, right? But they have known for years that carbon block filtering will get rid of all the pesticides, organics, inorganics, herbicides, all the chloridanes, all that stuff, heptachlorous, gets rid of the cryptosporium, bacteria and cysts like GRD. And, you know, it's the only one that takes mercury out. And it can be engineered to remove lead. And, of course, it can remove asbestos as well. Reverse osmosis, however, absolutely re removes fluorine, nitrates, and sodium. So... Here's my carbon system. I've got a pre-filter, uh, sediment filter, and my carbon block in the blue one. And in three months, that's how much stuff is coming through the water system that didn't get on me in the shower, that didn't get on my hands in the sink. Decrease your exposure. So I got myself a little RO unit, the one on the, on the left there. And I'll hook that up so I'll be able to pre-filter, pre-carbon treat the tap water, then have it go into the RO, which will make my membranes last a lot longer. And then I'll take that and mineralize it with my minerals. Change your time out of the sun. Get back in the sun. Inside, tungsten lamps, barcodes, mercury vapor, white LEDs, they don't have the frequency we need to build easy water. Outside, it does. Infrared saunas do. Nice warm baths do. You know, it's good stuff you can do. I see you giggling back there. <laughs> But get out in the sun. Oh, baby. That's right. <laughs> take time to do nothing. It's really hard for all of us to do this, but we really need to take time to do nothing. Because everyone says you have no time. But if you do not take time, how can you have time? So take your kid out hiking and put her on a rock and make her sleep on a rock for a while. It's good for you. And she's being grounded. Change your community involvement. We have to be locally centered. This, this, this global village crap, okay, it doesn't work. We need a globe of villages, right? So this is my grandson putting the flags on the, uh, the veterans last year in that thing. <laughs> He's awesome. He knows how to shoot. He knows how to camp and hike and all that stuff. My uh, son-in-law is doing a great job with him. And get stoned. <laughs> it's great for you. No, seriously, it is. Learn how to grow some weed. It's going to be, it's going to be more and more legal. Right? Come on, you can, you can clap with that one. That's right. And it's really simple. You know, it, it takes a few tries, and it'll be simple, seriously. And it's really important, too, because your body has endocannabinoid system of receptors, because your body is keyed to be able to accept these molecules to do specific biological work in your body, which means we evolved from the plants that have these receptor sites, which means the microbiome wanted those plants to be in the next iteration, so you know you have to do what the microbiome says, right? <laughs> What's interesting we found out, though, in, in, in research in Holland and in Spain is that the CBD and the THC aren't really the important the elation sedation chemicals aren't that as important as the terpene molecules, the fragrances. Now, anybody in the room that actually knows about cannabis, it comes with 118 different terpo uh, terpenoids. It smells like anything you can imagine. Watermelon, grapes, cherries, pepper, skunks, onions, uh, fruit, citrus. I mean, it's all because these terpenes have different fragrances. It turns out the terpenes have really strong anti-cancer effects. Uh, pinene that makes you smell like pines. Uh, great on, on liver cells. 
uh, toxicities towards cancer cells. Um, some of them, are, this is great. The one down here I like the most is this terpineol. It suppresses the NF-kappa B signaling in cancer cells, which allows the cell can't reboost, reproduce itself. It can't divide. It just stops cell division in tumors. It stops the tumor. Um, limonene also uh, accumulates in the white fat cells, like in breasts. And 100 milligrams a day, you can get rid of any problems in your dress with limonene. So really, these are the ones that are most important, is the fragrance molecules. The other ones make you sit on a couch or giggle for a half an hour. But these ones have, and it's interesting, because I tell people, look, when you go to a dispensary, if you live in a state where you have legal, you want to go in there and smell the weed. Smell the, smell the jars. If there's one you particularly like, you may be, your body, your ancient reptilian brain may be telling you, oh, wow, I could use that for something or other. And it may be telling you some chemical signals. You're, you need to kind of be cognitive to recognize them. Anyway, as you know, we have a big problem down in Uruguay, big trouble in little Uruguay. But if you want to grow some weeds, you can buy my weed minerals, which I sell on Amazon, <laughs> so, which comes with the divalent uh, iron and manganese to service these synthase molecules. And lay off the hallucinogens. I mean, serious. It's hard to tell the truth from anything anyway, so just stop. Just stop. <laughs> and be grateful you're still here. Really. We should be so grateful that we're still here. We were just one in four million that won at conception. We're lucky to be here. We have a, a, an incredibly rare, exotic planet that couldn't exist except for a stellar collision four and a half billion years ago that's been remembered in our Genesis tales and all that stuff, that we wouldn't be here if weird stuff hadn't happened and probably the likelihood is so small in the universe for it to happen like it did. So be glad you're here. Work with your friends and develop friendships and help people out and be grateful every morning. And by the way, if you want to pray, you can kneel or do anything you want, just don't talk. The universe doesn't hear talk. It doesn't understand language. It understands feelings and emotions. When you pray, don't pray for a thing. Imagine and have the feeling of what it would be like to attain what you're praying for, how good that would make you feel, how satisfied and relieved it would make you feel. That's the emotion that'll get the dream to come true. Try it. You'll like it. Mineralize your body and your food. Well, we do this stuff on eco-organics where you can buy stuff for your food. And you can, you know, grow your tomatoes in the backyard and get mineralized food. And it raises, it raises the nutrient levels of all these essential nutrients. I take it out of ocean water using a Schauberger technique of magnetic, magnetic vortexes, which is able to, to divide all this stuff up so I can get rid of the salt so you don't kill your microorganisms. And, you know, get out there and surf. And if you need some minerals, get Augie Doggy surf minerals. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, next week I'm going to have this up on eBay, so you can actually get some if you want. Just a tablespoon of the water in the morning, right? Change your habits, change your own life. Um, so you want to change your habits, uh, and you can, you know, do the minerals in water. That helps you make sure you get the minerals. It's not going to be in your food that day. It's just not going to be there. Deep breathing. Get the oxygen in the system. If you've grounded yourself all night, the blood's been separated, you're able to move all that, all that oxygen to the brain or the retina and wake up and do all that good stuff. When you deep breathe, Exhale like this. Don't go, go, force it out. Because that oxygenate pressure in the lungs forces the oxygen into the blood. Much better, much easier to get oxygen in the system. Vitamin C, we need it. We stopped making it two and a half million years ago. All the primates eat thousands of milligrams of vitamin C every day. Two eggs for every day for the, for the sulfur, green drinks, sun, mini trampoline. It's better than bouncing on concrete. And it pumps the lymph, so you clean your lymph out. In the sunlight, is even better because you're making it easy and flushing the lymph out and it's getting out of your body. Uh, do some exercise. Eat sauerkraut and kefir and yogurt to re replenish your microbiome because that's what they're asking you to eat for them. <laughs> and uh, stop eating the sugars. And for the rest of your life, take a stand. Boycott Monsanto. Don't eat the food. You don't have to put them out of business. You just have to eat the food. Resist corrupt authority. If you don't want to have vaccines, get yourself a rubber vaccine arm. And I'm serious. Go ahead, buddy. Put a couple up right here. Oh, give me one over here. Share it with your friends in adult and child sizes. There's a big industry if you want to do that. <laughs> Protect yourself. Protect your family. Get a gun. Learn how to use it. Exercise your rights. Remember Germany? You don't need guns, they said. Then they said, board the trains. Get a gun. Because if you don't get a gun and they illegalize them, we'll still figure it out. I mean, seriously. <laughs> we'll still figure something out. So stop listening to illogical propaganda. 
and you thought I wouldn't bring him up. <laughs> now he's saying global warming causes global cooling. <laughs> Got to cover all your bases. Anyway, and above all, lighten up, because you are light. That's what you are. And believe that anything is possible. God knows his proof with me. Here I was in 1889. <laughs> I always wonder, you know, do we come back? Here I was in 1969. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've done really unusual things, met some really unusual people, like the heads of NASA, the heads of the Space Station Engineering Department, um, the directors of the NASA Space Station Program, been awarded by him. Hung out with Buzz Aldrin, and he and I did the uh, presentation for the Blue Ribbon Panel in Space Station Redesign in 1993. He introduced me to the other astronauts. They introduced me to shuttles. Got me ready for certain Air Force missions that I can't talk about. So it does happen. You can get up there. And be kind. Everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by his ability to climb a tree, he'll think he's stupid forever. Be gentle, be understanding, don't judge others, be patient, and learn how to let go. And trust sanity, because if you can't change your mind about stuff, you might not have one, right? <laughs> and be sure to understand what wasted and useful lives are all about. <laughs> hmm. And practice what I practice. My motto is, feed the friendly dog. Insane we trust. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>